1989, students stood in front of Chinese tanks and they chanted Shelley's words as they demonstrated against the autocratic and murderous cult of Chairman Mao. Ye are many, they are few. And in 2011, as anti-capitalist risings worldwide denounced the idols of Mammon, crowds again quoted from Shelley's Mask of Anarchy in both their banners and their meetings. Rise like lions from your slumber. Ye are many, they are few. Showing that despite Oxford's attempts to silence it, that godless anarchist voice is still heard. In 1812, having shaken off all Oxford's dust, Shelley's in London, building sky lanterns, fire balloons with undercarriages filled with poems, poems to protest England's presence in Ireland. The king had given his son a party at Carlton House, the Prince Regent's Ball, which boasted follies such as fake streams encased in silver banks 200 feet long, the length of a banqueting table, and filled with goldfish costing £120,000, or the equivalent of £2 million. What think you of the bubbling brooks and mossy banks at Carlton House? Shelley asked. Then he listed all the disgusting splendours that had so offended him about royal excess. While Lancashire's mill workers were starving, Shelley poured his fury into a fifty-line poem, tossing copies of it through the windows of carriages that were driving towards Carlton House. And then even more poems were cradled in the wire undercarriages of his miniature hot air balloons, so that selections from a whole poetry bookshelf were finding their way through the clouds. A poem would float down from the sky above. Tremble, kings despised of man, traitors to your country, of the envenomed rule of the rich. The seed ye sow, another reaps. The wealth ye find, another keeps. Sow seed, but let no tyrant reap. Find wealth, let no impostor heap. These lanterns, laden with knowledge, as Shelley described them, would fly a thousand feet in the air, then, burning out, the poems tumbled down, scattering across England to change it. To change a colonial system where many faint with toil, that few may know the cares and woes of sloth. Tennyson said Shelley gave the world another heart and new pulses, and Clough that he made wings for others to fly on. Karl Marx's daughter, Eleanor, remembered her father saying, the real difference between Byron and Shelley is this, those who understand them and love them rejoice that Byron died at 36, because if he had lived, he would have become a reactionary bourgeois. They grieve that Shelley died at 29, because he was essentially a revolutionist, and he would always have been one of the advanced guard of socialism. Not forgetting that Shelley's defiance would also claim him for revolutionary anarchism, summed up by no masters, no gods, or, as Shelley put it, Kings, priests, and statesmen blast the human flower, even in its tender bud. Their influence darts like sudden poison through the bloodless veins of desolate society. The civil disobedience of Thoreau was fueled by Shelley, as was the pacifism of Gandhi, who would read Shelley to vast assemblies. The anarcho-punk band Chumbawamba sang this in their song after Shelley. Anybody can press a button and blow a shuffle. Anybody can use an atom bomb. Anybody can pick up a big whip and whip you. Anybody can stick a knife into you. Anybody can pull a trigger. But where's the man with the character that can take a punch on the nose and keep his temper and keep control of himself? Chumba. Then Chumbawamba chanted Shelley's own words. Words that inspired the Chartist riots. The seed he sowed. The seed he sowed. Another reaps. The wealth you find. Another keeps.
Off the coast of Arreggio, Shelley's boat, the Ariel, sank, and Shelley drowned. He was cremated on the beach, but his heart wouldn't burn, and Mary Shelley would carry it in a silken shroud for the rest of her life. A heart that had said, No will of God excuses the discrepancies between rich and poor, maintained by monarchy and by its gilded flies, and by standing armies serving the system, all of which Shelley thought could be turned upside down by poesy, by its inspiration and its sense, and by what smug Oxford claims to have traded in for centuries, the transformative power of the mind. At University College, spoilt students have poured red paint on Shelley's prostrate marble figure. Others have chipped off his genitalia as they rejoiced in a beery stupor. We've got Shelley's balls. As if they've thought that something subversive might rise up and shatter their world. And as if they could thus persuade their atrophied hierarchies, class-bound and unfair, to stay as they were. Death to a voice imploring the wind to scatter his words like sparks on an unawakened earth, and to touch the world with living flame, and to trumpet a prophecy that would serve to quicken a new birth, a voice that habitually extolled the spirit of love, the harmonized intelligence of infinite creation, a voice that insisted that this was not to be confused with a god whose priests had once rebuked Shelley for wearing loud pantaloons. He died, Shelley's wife wrote, and the world showed no outward sign. But the world's indifference was no accident. The middle classes sensed an enemy of all that they stood for, one who hated injustice with a passion that never left him. Just like Ariel in Shakespeare's Tempest, an elemental minister of fate who did all of his spriting gently, Shelley showed England's island what it was. He yearned for the awakening of England, for the awakening of an immense nation from their slavery and degradation, the bloodless dethronement of their oppressors, and the unveiling of the religious frauds by which they had been deluded into submission. On Shelley's grave in Rome, Ariel's song assures the reader, Nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. And as you look at it, you become more aware of Shelley's richness and strangeness, and you realise but his avowed atheism never affected the power of his spirit. And when you read the two words at the top, cor cordium, and their translation sinks in, words put there by Mary Shelley, meaning heart of hearts, the shade of this atheist martyr quickens the pulse 